Today we're going to do a full tutorial on setting up Looking Glass using your existing VFIO computer. If that's not something you have, you're going to want to follow this tutorial series first. Let's get into it. Now we're ready to install Looking Glass, which is a really great program. What it does is it allows you to have a movable, stretchable, and full screenable window that displays what's happening inside your VM with a high frame rate and low latency. The way it does that is by running a host program inside the VM. That program sends the display frames to a shared memory device configured in your virtual machine. That shared memory device is a file that lives on your Linux computer and has permissions set on it so that it can be used by both yourself and the QMU virtualization software. And lastly, there's a Looking Glass client program which runs on Linux and reads the frames from that shared file and displays them to your screen. We're going to set this up in the opposite order. First, we're going to install the Linux client program. Then we're going to create the shared memory device. Then we're going to make sure it has the right permissions. And then we'll add it to the VM. Lastly, we'll install the Looking Glass host application to the VM. And when we're done, we'll have all the required parts. OK, so first we're going to install the Looking Glass client on Fedora. So Looking Glass doesn't have a Fedora package like all the other programs that we've installed so far. So what we're going to do is we're going to build it from the source code and install the required dependencies. First, let's download the latest stable release of the Looking Glass source code. I'll unzip it and change into that directory. Now I need to install all the required and optional dependency programs needed for Looking Glass. And now we're ready to build it with a few commands shown here. We make dir client slash build. We change into that directory. We use cmake to generate the build files. And then we can use make to compile everything. Then when that finishes, we can run sudo make install so that in the future, we can start the looking glass client with the command looking glass client. Right now, it's not able to connect to anything because we don't have a VM running, but in the future, this will launch a window that allows us to show anything running in our VM with high performance and low latency. The next piece we have to set up is the shared memory device that's used to share video frames from inside the VM. To do that, I'll create a systemd temp file configuration for the right file in the right location with the right permissions. I've had to tweak this from what's recommended by Looking Glass so that the owning user is myself and the owning group is QMU. Having this file exist means that when my computer starts up, this file will be created in a way that both QMU and my user will be able to access it. That's how the VM is going to share video frames with the Looking Glass program. The last thing we have to do to fix the permissions on this file is to set the se Linux context with the se manage command. SE Linux is a set of security features for Linux to make sure the right things are being accessed in the right contexts. We just have to make sure this is set up so the VM can properly access this file even though it isn't the one that created the file. So now I'll just reboot my computer and I can check that that file was created and is created with the right SE Linux context using the command ls-alz. And it looks like it works. Now I've got to add that shared memory device to the VM configuration. We've already enabled XML editing, so then let's open the XML config for the VM and I'll add this snippet from the Looking Glass instructions for the new device. Now I can start the VM and inside the VM I need to tell it to cast its screen from the HDMI out here to the shared memory device. So I'll just download, install, and run the Looking Glass Windows host program. Once it's installed, it should start automatically in the future when the VM starts up. So now I can run the Looking Glass client on the Linux host, and you can see it connects and it's showing the same thing that's going out the HDMI port. We can't get rid of the HDMI port because the Windows VM needs to think something is plugged into the GPU for it to use the GPU's performance. But we don't need an external display plugged in all day long. So I'm going to replace this HDMI cable with this dummy plug, which doesn't actually display anything, but emulates an HDMI output like I showed in this other video. And now I've got a way to get high performance game running inside my VM in a really easy way to display it to the screen on my laptop. I also want to be able to use shortcuts with Looking Glass, and most of them are hotkeyed on the scroll lock button. 
This is tough because my laptop doesn't have a scroll lock button. So I'm going to rebind that to the right control key using the argument dash M97. I'm going to save this to bash RC so that it's easy to launch later. Next time, I can just type in the command looking glass and it will launch with my predefined settings. And that's it, you've got a working looking glass setup. If you want to set up your mouse and your speakers to work with your VM and looking glass, you're on your own. Sorry. No, I'm just kidding. I use EV Dev and Spice for my mouse and audio, respectively, and I've detailed that in my laptop guide that uh, is also linked in the description. But I'm also intentionally leaving that out from this video so that way you get to come up with your own solution and or use any recent developments in Looking Glass if it gets improved to include a seamless integration for mouse and uh, audio. Thanks for watching and don't forget to stay planned.